we came to Conwy um, because Roland's Marine, uh, who sold us the head. And our autopilot. And our autopilot are here. And um, the first thing they did was uh, put in a working speed logger and the unit, the head that we bought, is working fine. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> ours is still not reading the log. I had hope it was just going to be a simple um, wiring issue, but he rewired it and it's still not working. So what he's going to do is he took all the measurements of the um, current logger and he's going to see if we can get us a new logger and um, or at least find out and then we can know costs and all the rest of it but um, looks like we're going to be going around with just a depth gauge but at Sp least speed from, speed from GPS speed from GPS so it's just going to be speed from GPS so all those beautiful tidal things that you can get ain't gonna happen on this boat <laughs> not for a while not for a while but um, we don't know when that will be but it'll have to be a, a boat lift again no oh, of course of course we it's don't a logger you can just pop it logger. in we can put it in we'd oh oh <sighs> just means that we've just got to wire it through that's big that's fine. if i had to wait for a boat lift i'd wait for the annual lift out and do it then yeah but we don't do it because you just screw it in just and that's why and that's why he's taken all the um dimensions with the um I might get a new box for it and, and redo the box. Yeah, we might do, but um, regardless, <sighs> no happy solutions today, but we'll hopefully have a happy solution sometime in the future. What's happened with uh, when you put the propeller in, Bev? I locked the propeller off, which you're not supposed to do because it slows the boat down. Well, if it slowed the boat down, I haven't noticed. It might be a tenth of an up, maybe, perhaps. I don't really care. It's lovely. It's quiet. And I'm enjoying it. I'd rather have total silence on my boat than anything whirring or clunking. It's just me. I know Mr. Squeaky here is doing his thing. I've got him. I've given him a name. <laughs> That's Annie. Yeah, Annie's the autopilot, but the thing that makes the squeaks is oh. Annie too. Yeah, it's honey too. Okay. Is it good having Charlotte down there? It is, because I can see her from here and I can't see the binnacle from here. So, yeah, it's good having an extra chart potter downstairs. Um, we're just looking around us. Very, very little wind today. And I think part of the reason for that is that we appear to have a temperature inversion. Yeah, I remember it from my flying days. Um, basically, the air generally gets colder as you go higher. Um, but occasionally, a, a, an area of warm air can move in. And if there's cold air low down, it can slide over the top, like, um, like, a, like a snooker ball rolling along a table sort of thing. And when it does that, when you have warmer air higher up, the rising air from the sea surface or the land gets trapped because when it meets the warmer air, it's warmer than it, it stops rising. And what you get is you get like a smog at a certain altitude and it's the same level everywhere. And if you look over that way toward the Great Orm, you can see there's a hazy layer with a fairly well-defined bottom. And over toward um, the mainland, it's got it too. And out to sea, I can see it. So it's all around us. And it's got a fairly well-defined bottom and it just looks like a temperature inversion and it's got a nasty habit of messing around with the wind and you can get wind in different directions above the inversion and below the inversion um it's probably why we've got such a little wind today and we're probably going to get mist and sea fog later so it's just one of the things we'll see what happens um the um weather forecast is for fog as we go north well i, I could believe it 
I rarely get to go up front. a few hours and I can see where we left from just there <laughs> yeah well we could um, have the engine on and uh, go at a faster speed um, but um, for instance we were doing about 5.2 with the engine on um, our speed has now dropped to 3.9 it's because our wind has dropped to 8 knots we can generally sail salty lass 10 knots and above brilliant oh we're starting to really drop now 7.6 so we're starting to struggle i'll just move that way a bit because sometimes when i come a bit closer to the wind uh you generate lift it's um just one of those things but um but yeah we're just uh doing as much sailing as we can it is going to be a long haul um <laughs> do you need to be concentrating i do need to be concentrating uh, we've got uh the autopilot off um because um when it's like this uh she's she, she can't do too much wind and she can't do not enough wind <laughs> and I even think, I'm uh, struggling with the not enough wind. <laughs> I think the problem is she makes movements and the boat is moving so slowly that it has no results. So she makes bigger movements. And then... Yes, and then she gets herself over... Overwrought. Overwrought. But even I'm struggling on the small amounts of wind. But I'll get there. <laughs> Do you good. Practice. Yeah. So we're, we're practicing our light wind sailing at the moment. And sadly, we can't use a light wind seal because we're going to wind. Yes, unfortunately. We just had a very exciting few moments where, um, hang on a second, let me get the autopilot on. We just had a very exciting few moments where the whole boat gave a judder, the engine changed tone, the boat slowed down and we wondered, well it felt like we hit something and it turned out we bunged the camera over the side we had, there was a huge big bunch of seaweed wrapped around the prop. So we've stopped the boat, we've reversed the prop to try and blow the seaweed off. Uh, we haven't put the camera underneath to have another look again but it feels a lot better and so we're gradually working up speed again toward the Isle of Man. You can see why we're having to motor. I mean, look at the place. At one time, the uh, sea, it was so smooth, the sea just merged into the... Um... I call this sailing on jelly because it's like big... It's like, it's like a kid's jelly. It's just flat and languorous and stiff. It doesn't look like water anymore. But anyway, so we're currently motoring on jelly, but... We didn't know if we'd hit a jellyfish or, or a log or a rope or a fishing net or a buoy, but it turns out it looks like seaweed. So thank God that's all it was, but by God it didn't have to wake us up. Nearly. Ah! Just press the power off, but at least it's brighter. Oh, oh in case you're wondering, are you, am I on? Yeah, you're on. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, because we came in here late last night with the instruments dimmed right down, it's brilliant sunlight this morning and all the instruments are black, so I've got to brighten them up and I can't see the controls because they're too dark. Uh, well, we got permission from the Isle of Man authorities to 
mirroring this ball again in Port St. Mary to take a break because it was a long, long motor sail yesterday coming in. And we find it as dull as ditch water, don't oh, we, Bob? There's nothing duller than motor sailing. And um, so we're in, we've had a night's sleep, and now we're off to the calf of man. We've got a rattle in the engine, God knows. And we're hoping that the engine will at least get us through the calf of man and out the other side. So, one crisis at a time. First thing, get the plotter going. Second thing, get the boat prepped. Third thing, get the engine going and go. That's enough for one morning. It's, it's just having a breakfast. Well, Skipper Gainer, because you've got the skipper's hat on today. I certainly do. Well, Beverly bangs on about making sure that I can actually read the book and to get my tie times, whereas I'm a app girl. But she's right, as always, because we've got no service whatsoever. <laughs> but it's only because we're in an Isle of Man and I don't think we either of us got the correct roaming contract or you've got to activate something or something like that, but... We've got no apps. <laughs> so you're back to the book. So I'm back to the book. Right. Morning, Skipper. We're back in Belfast Lock, Bev, and how do you know that we're back in Belfast Lock? Because the world's largest cruise ship's bearing down on me. <laughs> I'm sure it's not the largest. I see we're in the engine compartment again. Don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a loud rattle uh, underway and we're determined to find out what it is. It's either the water pump bearing or the alternator. We suspect the alternator. But I'm going to take the fan belt off and we're going to turn them both by hand. And one of them will make a horrible rattly grindy noise with a bit of luck and then we'll know which one it is. But until that merry moment, first job is take the darn thing apart again. I feel like I have hand in my head in shame again. Why? Uh, we've, we've gone over the engine and um, asked uh, quite a few fellow boaters uh, because we were thinking the um, uh, water pump, the alternator, all this sort of stuff. We had people listening to the noises that it was making and they're saying it's not an engine noise, it's not an engine noise. So what we think it is in the end is because we had a tiny oil spot and I really do mean a tiny oil spot just underneath the dipstick and with, and, some sp and with some spray under the oil filter and we had some spray under the oil filter and what we think it is or was was the fact that we hadn't put the um dipstick down um enough because we check out every time and check the oil yeah we it's just part of your engine checks and we mustn't have put it right down. The, and the other just, suspect, from my point of view, is we also took the fan belt off and checked everything, put it back on again, and maybe it's under a different tension. Yeah. Maybe well, we had it too tight. Maybe we did, but it's certainly not making the noise now. And as far as we're concerned, that's great, because it means no buying of extra parts or anything like that. It just means we can go off again. Yeah, but it's, it does worry me that we had a noise, we got rid of the noise, and we don't really know what we did. No, but if it was the oil filter, because uh, you said when you looked, at, did the engine check, you said that was too easy to pull out. Mm. You know what I mean? When you did the uh, checks before we... Uh, yeah, started. there's normally a wee bit of resistance and then it pops up. This, exactly. Th whereas this it time just, it just lifted out. It just lifted out and that isn't what normally happens. And we had the little bit of oil. On we the, had oil splatter on the wall, on the uh, pipe beside it and on the oil filter. Exactly. I, so I've cleaned it all off. Okay, well, because we've, we've done these little fiddles, we do have a little tiny oil spill to just underneath it again right so that was quick exactly it was just just because um we were trying to 
simulate the uh, issue. Right. Okay, latest update from Engine Land. <laughs> uh, basically, it's a it's a it's a it's a dimple. What is? <laughs> My oil spill spot. It's a little dimple in the fiberglass. It's a little dimple in the fiberglass. Oh, dudes, I will. We are learning this engine because we've got to look after it ourselves. That's it. That's it. I'm taking your spanners off you. Uh, well, I bought a new one. Bought oh. a 16 mil today. Oh no. Yeah. 